Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel here at Ginger E Farms. Thank you for joining us today. So today we're in our guest bedroom upstairs and we're gonna be pulling up some carpet. We figured we'd show you the process. So first we're gonna start off with moving any large objects out of the way, out of the room, and then pulling the doors off just to clear space in the doorways. So let's get to work. All right, so we're gonna start with taking the closet door off. This is the more important door to get out of our way. So the first thing I like to do is close the door. That way it can't tip out of the way as I pull the pins out. And then I'll pull the bottom one, then the top one. And usually you can use either a pry bar or a screwdriver. And if they're not loose enough to where you can just pull them out, you just take a hammer and tap it in there and loosen it, and then you can pull it out. These ones are pretty loose, I think. And the top one. Got lucky on these ones. Then we can just pop our door out and carry it outside. So it's time to start cutting up some carpet. Um, all you really need for this is a box cutter and sometimes if the edges of the carpet sticking a pry bar to help get it off the floor. Um, I also like to use some cut resistant gloves just for safety. I'm working with a blade and um, safety glasses. With these old carpets, I don't know what's gonna be under them. Better safe than sorry. So your first step is you're gonna find a small section and start cutting strips. I like to use smaller sections um, because as you pull it up and roll the carpet for the whole length of the room, it's going to get pretty heavy fast. It's surprising how fast it gets heavy. So I do small sections, easier to work with, also easier to maneuver as you're taking it like downstairs and around corners and out of the house. So let's get started. First step, make a long cut. And then peel it up. Sometimes this is where it can be tricky to pull away from a wall. Um, if it was sticking, that's where you want your pry bar. The reason it can be like that is because they have this tack board here. Um, that's what's sticking the edges of the carpet down. So if it's giving trouble, just use a pry bar. This came up pretty easy. Um, or if you have a partner, like I have Xavier, um, once I start peeling this up, or I can cut and he can come behind me and peel up the carpet. As you can see, all the carpet's now been torn up out of the guest bedroom. So, Xavier, what's our next step? Now we do exactly the same thing we just did, but with the foam pad underneath. Okay, let's get to it.
of the reoccurring themes that we found in this house is damage underneath the windows from water. We were kind of expecting that going in just because of the shape of the windows and uh, the fact that they haven't really been cared for. So this one has a pretty decent amount of damage underneath it. It's about the same as what we found in the master bedroom when we pulled up the carpet and got a look under there. So once we get the windows done, obviously we're going to have to replace some of the subfloor here. But we've also got another section over in the middle underneath our uh, old exterior wall that looks like there was possibly some damage or they did some work underneath in the uh, joists and uh, ended up replacing a section of it. Uh, we may end up replacing sections of the subfloor, not just underneath the windows. It kind of depends on uh, how things go with the renovations and one of the big things is we don't want our floors to squeak at all so we may end up putting in something a little more sturdy like plywood instead of this particle board that they've used for uh, subfloor. So our next step is we're going to pull up all the tack board and pull the baseboard off. Uh, in this room it makes it pretty easy. Uh, our baseboard is run all the way down to our subfloor so we can just pop off all of our tack boards here and then once we're done with that, we'll pull the baseboard off. And it comes off pretty easily, just with a pry bar. You just have to be careful, it's got some nice spikes that hold the uh, carpet in place. next step is we're going to pull baseboard off. Uh, we're going to take it off somewhat gently because we're thinking we might reuse it. We haven't decided yet. So we're going to try not to break it as much as we can. Uh, we may sand it down and repaint it and use it going forward. But we're going to try to gently separate it from the wall, mostly prying on studs so we don't put a whole bunch of holes in the sheetrock behind it. over bits of the uh, tack board that I did without. One down, 20 more to get on. Oh, it's sticking in this corner again. Oh, Xavier, look what we found. More funky wallpaper. More crazy, hold on, I wanna see better. Get some better sections of this. 
I love the crazy wallpaper in this house. Oh, there we go. There we go. Is it more or less crazy than the wallpaper that's over it, though? I don't know. I think I'd rather this floral, than, than the floral blue. or floral stripes. I mean, at least it's not that pink stuff we found in the master bedroom, right? It's true. Yeah, it's textured stripes. What do y'all think? Would you rather have textured stripes or if you can get a close up this old white floral? White in your yeah, white it used to be white. Which would you rather have in your house? Let us know in the comments. <laughs>